Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. Today I will be discussing some of the things that I wish I knew before I got married the first time. Yes, I wish I knew a lot of things. Stay tuned. All right, family, so these are not in any particular order at all. It's just things that I thought about that came to my head. So the very first one is I wish that I would not have revealed what my deal breakers were. I wish I would have just paid attention and, uh, you know, just, just watch to see versus me verbally expressing what my deal breakers were because then my ex-husband decided to hide my top three deal breakers from me for a long time. It was actually a few years before they got revealed and then we were already married and um, I either had to decide to deal with them or not. I decided to stay. That's beside the point. So I wish I would not have revealed what they were because he was able to hide them from me. And he actually did a really good job. He hid them from me really good. The second thing I wish I knew was what red flags were and how to look for them. See, I know that now, but as an 18, 19, 20 year old, I had no idea what red flags were because this is not something that we actually expressed or talked about in my family. We actually didn't talk about dating in my family at all. We didn't talk about marriage in my family at all. However, I did grow up around every single person that I knew, or at least the majority of them, the ones that I hung around all the time, my aunts, they were all married. And I was always around my family all the time. So only thing that I remember seeing was my family. So if naturally, I wanted to grow up and get married because that is all that I seen. And there was no dysfunction that I seen outright. Let me just say that. So I wish I knew what red flags are and how to go about looking for them. The third thing I wish I knew was how to actually go about dating. Again, this was not something that was discussed in my family. And not to throw my family under the bus, actually I will say that I spoke to my mom about this many years later when I was already divorced and absolutely already as an adult. And uh, I actually asked her, how can we never discuss things like this? Because I learned everything that I learned the hard way. I did. The school of hard knocks was the way that I learned everything. And I just wanted to change. So anyway, I talked to my mom about it. And honestly, she just said that she couldn't give me that information because she didn't have it to give. Now, isn't that the way that we pass things down or do not pass things down? If we don't have it, we don't pass it down to our children. And that was the, the classic case with me. She didn't have it. She didn't date. So she couldn't give it to me or any of her other children. That's the third thing I wish. I really wish I knew how to date. The fourth thing that I really wish I knew is how to love myself and what loving myself and respecting myself looked like. See, because for a long time I actually had low self-esteem. This beautiful chocolate skin was not something that I embraced until I was an adult. I didn't embrace it for a long time. And most of you, especially you Americans, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This chocolate skin was not sought after until recently, at least in women. Most men haven't had the, the chocolate skin. They haven't had the issue. But women with the chocolate skin, we have had the issue of not being selected for. And I was no different. And I was teased. And I was called every name that you could think of in the book. And so it took me a long time to embrace this chocolate skin. Now, don't get it twisted. You can't tell me nothing now, right? Because I got my esteem, okay? Shoulders are back. You see what I'm up? <laughs> Ain't nothing you can tell me now, but back in the day, they was probably slumped. I was probably always looking down. Like, I can't tell you now just because it's, it's there. The esteem is there, right? This chocolate skin, ooh, up, okay? Don't get it twisted. Anywho, I'm going to move on. The fifth thing that I wish I knew before I said I do was how to maintain a healthy relationship. Again, not something that we speak about. It's not something that we give directions on to our children. We need to know 
how to maintain a healthy relationship without all of the yelling, cussing, literally fighting or verbally fighting, you know, uh, uh, dragging each other down, literally and figuratively. I didn't necessarily see any of this growing up. But when I got into my own relationship, because I didn't really know what to mirror, it didn't go well all the time. We didn't get into fist fights because that's not my thing. However, it just didn't go well. I wanted to know how to maintain a healthy relationship. And I think that the road that I traveled was the road that I was supposed to travel. However, right in my heart of hearts, for my wish, if I controlled my life and not God, then I probably would have still been married the first time. And not necessarily to him, but I would have never been a divorcee. Uh, I, I'm actually the person that does a lot of compromising, but I still didn't realize how important it was. I didn't necessarily recognize that word compromise. I didn't really recognize that's what I was doing. I just wanted things to be easy. I wanted things to be um, back to the way they were, which is that whole loving state, the laughter state. We always had a good time state. And so because of that, I was just like, this really is not that important to me. But I didn't necessarily know that I was compromising. I didn't know that I was using that word. Number eight is a big one. I want y'all to understand this, uh, family. Who you date is who you marry. Didn't understand that. I think earlier I actually said that he didn't reveal himself until after we got married. But that actually is kind of a slight lie, at least some of it. And what I mean by that is he revealed some of... The deal breakers that I was talking about, he revealed some of them before we got married. And in my mind, like a lot of us women do, when we get married, it's going to be different. So keep in mind, I wish I would have known who you date is who you marry. So if there's something that you don't like about your partner, and I'm not just talking about one thing. You can live with one thing. You can live with a couple things, actually. But if, if the list of what you think you can't live with versus what you can live with is longer. You probably need to walk away, boo. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. That actually leads me to point number eight, which is your mate will only change if and when your mate wants to change. I wish I would have known that. He only going to change if he wanted to change. He didn't want to change, so he didn't. But I couldn't see that he had to want to change. I couldn't see that at the time. I wanted him to change because that's not what I wanted to live with, even though I said I do, right? Because I was so in love with him and things were going so great and they went great for many years. I didn't have like a super horrible marriage. I didn't. It didn't last, but it wasn't the worst marriage out there. It, it actually had more good years than bad. We just didn't work out. Moving on. Number nine, I wish I would have known that the relationship is absolutely going to be tested. And boy, it was tested. Doesn't matter what it was tested from. Just know your relationship absolutely will be tested. Your marriage will absolutely be tested. If you talking to other people out there and they tell you, girl, we ain't never been through nothing. Clearly walk away from them. They're lying. Yes, I'm putting them on blast. Yeah, they are. Because in order to get to a super happy marriage, a blissful state, y'all got to go through some changes before you get there because you guys are two separate people trying to get trying to come together as one. And that's kind of hard because you are two individuals before you get together. So I wish I would have known that. Uh, this next one is actually a big one for me. It's actually number 10. I wish I would have known how important it is to respect the other person's time alone or me time. I'm a person that always wants to be up under you. I'm a person that always wants to be touching and loving and, and uh, um, cuddling up. And my one of my love languages is quality time. So I always want to be in your presence. And he would want to do things by himself. And I would always question, well, why do you need to? 
and maybe not in those exact words, but it was like, you know, what about me? You know, how can we know? How can we not hanging out? I was a bit clingy, if you will. Didn't realize how important it is to respect the person's time for me time. I need that now. I didn't know how important it was. And especially for men, it's really important for men for us to kind of just let them go off and be men and then come back. Because we drain them a lot. We drain them a lot with our emotional stuff. <laughs> I didn't realize how important it was for me. Number 11, I wish I would have known to not use sex as a weapon. I actually did not do this much, but I still didn't realize at the time how important it is not to use sex as a weapon. I just, I just didn't know. Again, I didn't do this often, but I did it enough for me to realize now, okay, sex is a time for you two to come together. Sex is a time where most men show you their love for you. Didn't realize how important that was. I know now, right? <laughs> Had to go through something to get to where I am today. Number 12, I wish I would have understood what I actually wanted, needed, and desired from a relationship because I really didn't know. Because I had low self-esteem, right? When I moved away from the house, it was a lot of men throwing themselves at me. A lot of them. I had no idea it was because I was fresh meat or fresh bait, whatever word you want to put in there. I didn't know. I just was like, wow. Wow. It's a lot of attention coming. And I didn't really handle the attention the best way. Okay, let's just say it that way. <laughs> I didn't handle it with the best way. And so all of it really had to do with the fact that I did not know what I wanted, needed, and desired. And I wish I would have known that before I said I do. Number 13, I wish I would have not tried to force to make the relationship work. Because when you're the only person that's trying to make the relationship work, it's not going to work. If it's not both of you trying to make the relationship work, it's not going to work. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me when I say. Hear me when I say this. If it's not both of y'all trying to make y'all relationship work, it ain't going to work. It's just not. Number 14. I wish I would have known that you had to, had to, add to, and build your partner up. In order for them to feel safe and secure with you, confident with you, that you're going to be loyal to them. I didn't know that you necessarily had to use the words. I, didn't, I just didn't know. Right? You actually got to verbalize those things. I was supportive. You know, he would tell me something, but I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, you can do this. You got this. Of course, you always do it right. Or, you know, words of encouragement. I didn't necessarily know I needed to verbalize those things. So I, I didn't do it. And if I did do it, it probably was just uh, by happenstance. It wasn't something that I intentionally did. So build them up. Give them some words of encouragement. I didn't write it. I just didn't know. I didn't. Number 16. I never realized how important religion is and how it impacts the two of you. Especially if you guys are coming from two separate religions. Now, in my first marriage, we did not come from two separate religions per se. And the reason why I say per se is because he grew up with two religions. One was Christianity, which I am, and the other one was Muslim. So he had very conflicting issues going on within him, period. Because he liked some of what Christianity did. He also liked some of what uh, Muslim did. The Muslims did. So he had conflicting issues going on. And I didn't realize how important it was to be equally yoked. Like we use that word a lot. But honestly, I thought that we were enough in order to see things through. And just as a side note, I'll say that religion, children, and money are the top three reasons why people divorce. Keep that in mind. That's a side note. Children, religion, and money. Top three reasons. I didn't realize, which is number 17, the heavy impact it was on him because he was raised differently than me. Not too much, but enough for it to be a difference in our relationship. Um, 
especially if the person was abused. And I, I will have to put in a uh, disclaimer to say that this particular answer did not come from me. It came from somebody else. So my ex-husband, he was not he was not abused, just in case somebody is watching this that knows him. But um, somebody else gave me this to actually say. So I just want to put that out there. But anyway, um, they basically wanted me to make sure that I mentioned that if the person is abused, they... The way that they reared the children is different than if you were not abused in that way. And I made sure that I told them I would put that in here. So just rock with me for a little bit more. All right. We're more than halfway through with this. Number 18. I wish I would have known to ask more specific and direct questions to investigate and or understand his past. I was just going along with the happy-go-lucky, right? So sometimes he would do certain things and I would be like, what's up with this dude? Like, what? Or he would say certain things or react a certain way to things and I'd be like, what's going on with this dude? And then all of a sudden he would be back to his happy-go-lucky self. So I did not investigate enough or even try to understand his past because I just didn't know. Number 19. I wish I would have known that your spouse cannot make you happy. You yourself have to be happy. You yourself have to be whole. Right? Your spouse cannot make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. They can add to your happiness, but they themselves cannot make you happy. Wish I'd have known that. Number 20. Oh my God, I wish I'd have known this. Number 20, I wish I would have known how different men and women communicate, how differently we think, how differently we love. Just we different. We are different. You could say something and I could say something. It's the same sentence, but you hear something as in the man, you hear something different. Me as in a woman, I hear something completely different. I wish I would have known that. That could have helped that in a lot of situations. That right there, number 20, how we communicate completely different, how we love, commu how we love com um, completely different, that could have made a huge difference. Number 21, I wish I would have, seriously, I wish I would have known that you cannot, come on, come closer. I want you to get this. You cannot and do not give up your hobbies and or your friends. Now, I'm not saying you have to keep every single hobby in the book. I'm not saying that you have to keep every single friend in the book. Because some people are fair weather. They're only meant for a season. They're not meant for a lifetime. However, if you've given up every single person because your spouse don't like them, probably need to reconsider and rethink some things. There might be some lightweight abuse going on or getting ready to start. Because usually that happens when they want to isolate you from your friends and family. Now, just saying, pay attention to those things. Uh, yeah, I, I remember giving up a lot of my friends. He would just basically mention how he didn't like them. Next thing I know, they was gone out of my life. And you know, the, the sad thing, because I didn't know what I needed, wanted, and desired, or I didn't know that I didn't, I, that I didn't have to give up my friends, right? That could have just been one of our struggles or one of the things that we agree to disagree on. But I didn't realize I had the power to say no until one day I got tired of getting rid of all my damn friends. It was never about my family, but it was always about my friends. Always about my friends. And he was actually pretty jealous when I would have a male friend. And I remember my male friend specifically telling me how he would call and he would talk to my ex-husband. And my ex-husband knew exactly who he was. We hung out a few times together. And, and, and the guy that I'm speaking about, he actually dated my sister at one time. So... I didn't want nothing about him. We was just really cool. We was really cool people. All this is to say, I would talk to my friend months later, and he'd be like, hey, I called you. I mean, oh boy, oh boy, I ain't tell you. 
No. I left a message. I remember going to check the answer machine sometime. Wouldn't be no messages on there. Just saying. I'm just saying. I got rid of a lot of friends. A lot of friends. I just didn't know. I just didn't know. Number 22. I wish I would have known that you have to give each other time and space to grow, learn, think, and to recharge. So you can come back with a fresh head, fresh space, and you ready to delve deeper into the relationship. I wish I would have known that before I said I do. Yeah. Number 23. I wish I would have known not to compare my relationship to other relationships or other marriages. Number 24. I actually kind of said this before, but I have to repeat this, which is no one can make you whole. You have to be whole coming into the relationship. It's one person that's already whole joining together with the second person that's already whole. Y'all, two whole people coming together. See, I was already fragile and broken. And he was fragile and broken. We wasn't whole before we got into a relationship. There's no wonder it didn't work out, right? Number 25. I wish I would have known how different marriage is in reality versus the fantasy that we see on TV. It's completely different, y'all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Not necessarily in a bad way, but definitely in a you-need-to-be-experienced way. Not the they go through two or three problems throughout the movie relationship, and then they live happily ever after. It's a continuous growth process in the marriage. It's not the fantasy that you see on TV. Is some work involved in keeping things cohesive. Wish I would have known that. But I just didn't know. Number 26. I wish I would have known not to keep things that I was angry about bottled up inside. I wish I would have known to express them right when it happens. Or shortly after, after you've calmed down. That way, when he does something else months later, I don't have a list from here to Timbuktu to tell him about all the things that's been sitting here. Just heavy on my heart. Just weighing me down. I'm waiting for the moment where I could just explode on right? Wish I'd have known not to do that. Tackle the issues right then and there or shortly after. Again, when you've calmed down, when the other person has calmed down. I just didn't know. Number 27. I wish y'all had known that love is not sappy like you see it on TV. It's not sappy like that. <laughs> Depends on who you get with, but most of the time love is not sappy like you see on TV. It's just not. Y'all both want y'all space sometimes. Y'all want to be in each other's face. Y'all might want to be in the same household, but in two different rooms. You're not always lovey-dovey, connected with each other, holding hands and singing kumbaya together. Just not like that. Which again, quality time is my thing. Touch is another thing for me. So, I like sappy. <laughs> I was expecting sappy. But, I just didn't know. <laughs> Number 28, I make sure I do this now because I'm engaged now for, your, for, for those of you who don't know who are actually on Audrey's channel. I'm engaged now, and so obviously I know all of these things now. However, number 28, I wish I would have known how important it is or was, I should say, how important it was to cover my spouse with continuous prayers. Now, my fiancé, I don't even know if he know how much I pray for him and pray for us and pray for our family. But I am a super prayer warrior, and uh, I get my prayer in, y'all. I wish I would have known how important it is to cover your spouse with prayers. Cover your spouse with prayers. 
especially if the relationship is getting serious now, y'all. Cover your spouse with prayers. Number 29, I like to say this all the time, which is focus on the positive, boo. You got to focus on the positive of what your spouse is actually bringing to the table, the positive of what they actually can do, and don't focus on the negative or the things that just drive you absolutely bananas. Those pet peeves. As a matter of fact, just as a side note, one of my videos coming up very shortly is about relationship pet peeves, so stay tuned for that one. Anyway, back to this. All right, y'all, number 30, we have finally made it. Number 30 is don't be afraid to love the most in the relationship. I wish I'd have known that. So you have to understand that sometimes y'all not going to be equal in y'all love for each other. For various reasons. For various reasons. And so you have to not be afraid to show your love the most sometimes to your partner. They need it. They might need that encouragement. They might be stuck in a rut about something. A lot of times it's about a career or job or, you know, some type of a uh, raise or something. Something dealing with money. You might need to show your love to them in order for them to start expressing them lo their love back to you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't let that fear hold you back from experiencing the best relationship that you can have. See here, I love me, me, me. I am trying to dramatically decrease the divorce rate so you guys can have one marriage and not go through the same thing that I went through. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. My 30 things that I wish I knew before I said I do the first time okay so if this is your very first time here to i love me 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 you make sure that you hit that icon where you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel or hit the red button right also if you enjoyed this make sure that you give me some thumbs up share this with all of your people again we are trying to dramatically decrease the divorce rate here at i love me 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 so go ahead and join the team i will see you guys in the next video <laughs>